Hey guys, this is Mr. Sisson, and this is our workshop on The Prince uh, by Niccolo Machiavelli. Um, and the first thing that, that uh, I want us to do is just have a little bit of context for this. Machiavelli um, lived before Havd, before Locke, um, and he lived in Italy. And his goal with this writing was to, uh, he was writing to the governor of Florence, Italy, and he was really wanting a position in government. And so basically this writing is him saying, hey, this is what an effective ruler looks like. And he was really wanting to win that guy over, um, that he'd be like, oh man, Machiavelli knows what he's talking about. I'm going to hire him. I'm going to give him a post. And so that's what this is all about. And really, um, you know, we've talked about Hobbes and Locke and Rousseau, and a lot of them are dealing with like, uh, societies or governments. What Machiavelli is concerned with is rulers. So the title, the prince, Machiavelli is concerned with how do you, how are you an effective leader? How do you make sure um, that that you keep power? And so to have a nice visual for us, I'm trying to keep up with Mr. Lou's drawings. I've drawn our own little uh, prince over here with a crown on top of his head. And Machiavelli's chief concern is how does that prince make sure that he keeps that crown on top of his head? How does he make sure that he stays in power? So we'll work through this, but keep that in mind as you work through, um, as, as, you, as you read through this. So the first section, that which concerns a prince on the subject of the art of war, warfare. So we'll read the first part of this first sentence. The prince ought to have no other aim or thought nor select anything else for his study than war and its rules and discipline, for this is the sole art that belongs to him who rules. And it is of such force that it not only upholds those who are born princes, but it often enables men to rise from a private station to that rank. Okay, so there are some strong words in here. Um, first of all, he says that a prince should have no other aim or thought than warfare, than war and its rules and discipline. For this is the only art, soul means, all that means is only, art that belongs to him who rules, and it is of such force that it not only upholds those who are born princes. So what that means is those people who are born into power, um, that it keeps them in power, that it upholds their position. But it often enables men to rise from a private station. All that means is someone who's not in power. Someone who uh, maybe isn't in the government. Um, so I'll write that out here. If you uh, work for Walmart, you're in the private station. If you work for Tyson, you're in the private station. Um, but that people from those spots can rise to the rank right here, this rank that he's talking about, is the prince, is the king, whatever, um, that they're able to rise to that station if they concern themselves with warfare. So obviously warfare is very important, is what Machiavelli is saying. And on the contrary, so this means the opposite. So looking in the opposite direction, it is seen that when princes have thought more of ease than of arms, Another way you could say that is maybe uh, uh, maybe say being comfortable instead of uh, instead of war. That's not the best, but we'll roll with it. So when a prince have thought more of ease than of arms, they have lost their states. They have lost the crown on top of their heads because they were more concerned with being comfortable than warfare. And the first cause of your losing it is to neglect this art. And what enables you to acquire a state is to be master of the art. He's just repeating what he just said. If you are a master of war, you are going to get power. If you avoid it, you are going to lose power. And he gives us an example here of a guy named Francesco Sforza, um, who I don't know who he is, but we'll, we'll learn about him says, Francisco Sforza, though being martial, martial just means like military-minded. Though being military-minded, uh, from a private person, remember, the, like a guy that works for Walmart, guy that works for Tyson, became Duke of Milan. This is a position of power. That means he 
runs Milan, basically. Look at it like uh, the mayor or governor of Milan. That's a city in Italy. And the sons, so Francesco Sforza's sons, uh, through avoiding the hardships and trouble, troubles of arms, which is war, from dukes became private persons. For among other evils which being unarmed brings you, it causes you to be despised. And this is one of those ignominies, which this just means shames, against which a prince ought to guard himself, as is shown later on. So all that he says, he says it a few different ways. If you focus on war, then you are going to gain power. If you become a master of it, you will gain power. And if you avoid it, you're going to lose it. And remember, everything's about keeping the crown on top of, your, uh, on top of his head. Okay, so we're going to move on to these next couple parts. Um, concerning things for which men, and especially princes, are blamed. So he says, it remains now to, to see what ought to be the rules of conduct for a prince towards subject and friends. This just means the people that he's in power over. And as I know that many have written on this point, I expect I shall be considered presumptuous in mentioning it again, especially as in discussing it, I shall depart from the method of other people. Okay, so... Um, what he's saying here in this whole sentence um, is he's saying, hey, a lot of people have talked about how a ruler should treat the people that he's over. Um, and he's saying people will probably see that I'm about to talk about this and say, well, what does Machiavelli have to teach us that we don't already know? And he's saying, well, I'm about to depart from the methods of other people. Meaning, I'm going to talk about it in a completely different way, and I'm going to have different conclusions than other people have talked. Other people have come to. So, and this is going to be really important. This is going to be one of the main things we get out. But it being my intention to write a thing which shall be useful, these kinds of words are going to be really big to Machiavelli, which shall be useful to him who to apprehends it. It appears to me more appropriate to follow up the real truth of a matter than the imagination of it. Okay. This is going to be really important right here. He's saying the real truth instead of the imagination of it. Well, what are we talking about right now? We're talking about a prince's conduct towards his people. And he's saying we need to see how they really relate to the people instead of what the way we think we should. So what that means is um, uh, when we think Locke and Hobbes and, oh, this is the perfect way that it should be and this or Rousseau and everything, Machiavelli is not going to fall into that trap. He wants, to, he wants to think in reality, which means that if you're just a person who uh, daydreams and you think of, like, perfect society... or um, goodness, or love, or flowers. <laughs> I don't know if you'd say flowers, but um, puppies. I don't know. I'm going off the, rack, uh, off the rails here. Anyways, but all those things that were like, that's just how the world runs, everything. Like, that is not Machiavelli. He says, this is all idealistic. And so when Rousseau says, man, before society was equal and they lived happily, Machiavelli would say, you're imagining things. I want to deal with reality here. What's the real world like? And when we look at the real world, we find that it's more than just love and goodness, that there are really bad things that happen in this world. And we need to figure out how we function in that, how a ruler functions in that. He says, for many pictured, many have pictured republics and principalities which in fact have never been known or seen. The imagination of it. You could even say Rousseau did this. He made up a whole society. We don't even know if it existed. Because how one lives is so far distant from how one ought to live. Okay, that's a pretty big question or a pretty big statement. And do you see that in your own life? How many times do we know that we should study and we don't study? How many times do we know that we should respect our parents and we don't? How many times do we know we shouldn't talk bad about our friends behind their back, but we still do it? That's what Machiavelli is saying. That's reality. 
that he who neglects what is done for what ought to be done sooner affects his ruin than his preservation. For a man who wishes to act entirely up to his professions of virtue soon meets with what destroys him among so much that is evil. Professions of virtue is what we say is good. A man, so if a man only does what is good, he's going to be ruined. So that makes me think a little bit of like, um, some of you guys may have heard statements like this, like, uh, do right no matter what. Maybe you've heard things like that in your life or do the right thing even when no one's looking, something like that. Well, Machiavelli would say that that is the stupidest thing that he's ever heard. If you want to keep power, that will never work. You have to do something different from just being good. And so he says, Hence it is necessary for a prince wishing to hold his own to know how to do wrong and to make use of it. It's just like useful. Uh, or not according to necessity. Therefore, putting on one side imaginary things concerning a prince and dis discussing those which are real. We're talking about this up here. I say that all men, when they are spoken of, and chiefly princes for being more highly placed, are remarkable for some of those qualities which bring them either blame or praise. And thus it is that one who is reputed liberal, another miserly. One is reputed generous, one rapacious, one cruel, one compassionate, one faithless, another faithful. And I know that everyone will confess that it would be most praiseworthy in a prince to exhibit all of the above qualities that are considered good. Okay, so we're kind of back in, in dealing with um, just the different things that a prince is given credit for. For, for me, um, you know, for me, whenever I see this, I think about, uh, this is going to sound lame, but like football coaches. You know, oh, that guy's smart, or that guy's stupid, or that guy doesn't know how to make play calls, or that guy's a, a good recruiter. I don't know if that makes sense to you at all. Um, but he goes through all these different ways that he could be described, and he says, we would look at all those and say, oh, gosh, we need to make sure that, that our leaders are um, faithful, um, that they're liberal, that they're generous, um, that they're compassionate. And he said, that's what we would do. We would say, all those are much better. But because they can neither be entirely possessed nor observed. Ooh, man, that's a curveball right there. Yeah, we all say that they should be good, but is anybody all those things? Remember, we're dealing with real truth, not imagination. Machiavelli is saying, hey, yeah, it'd be great to be liberal and generous and compassionate and faithful, but no one can have all those completely. For human conditions do not permit it. How many times do we not do what we know is right? It is necessary for him to be sufficiently prudent that he may know how to avoid the reproach of those vices. This would be bad habits or bad things. That's real specific. Which would lose him his state. Okay, we're going to get through this last section kind of quick because my goal is to keep this under 16 minutes. We'll see. Um, the last one is concerning cruelty and clemency and whether it is better to be loved than feared. Upon this, a question arises, whether it is better to be loved than feared or feared than loved. If you've ever seen The Office, Michael Scott says he'd want to be both. He wants people to be afraid of how much they love him. Um, and Machiavelli kind of agrees with him. He says, it may be answered that one should wish to be both, but because it is difficult to unite them in one person, that means it's very difficult to be a person that uh, makes people afraid of them and also loves them. You know, it's hard, that's a hard thing to do. And Machiavelli said it is much safer to be feared than loved. Safer is going to be really close to useful. Safer. We're going to see more words like that. When of the two, either must be dispensed with, that means gotten rid of, because this is to be asserted or claimed in general of men, that they are ungrateful, fickle, false, cowardly, covetous, so let's put this, fickle just means you change your mind a whole lot. Covetous means you want what other people have. And as long as you, succeed, uh, as long as you are a success, they are yours entirely. They will offer you their blood, property, life, and children, as is said above, when the need is far distant. But when it approaches, they turn against you. This makes me think of Razorback football. 
Whenever a coach is winning, we all love him. We say he's the best coach that's ever existed. Oh, he's so perfect. And whenever things go badly, you could think of Brett Bielema this year. Whenever we start losing, everybody hates him. And what he's saying right here is, hey, men at their heart are ungrateful, fickle, false, cowardly, covetous. And they only are with you when there's, when there's success. And they'll do whatever they need to whenever there's success. But whenever there isn't, they turn against you. That sounds awful, an awful lot like our friend Thomas Hobbes, doesn't it? So you can see maybe how Machiavelli would have even influenced Hobbes. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I'd say. And that prince who relying entirely on their promises has neglected other precautions is ruined because friendships that are obtained by payments and not by nobility or greatness of mind may indeed be earned, but they are not secured. That means... If, you, if, so, if someone's friends with you because you give them a dollar every day, what's going to happen when you run out, of that, uh, run out of that money? You can't give them a dollar anymore. Well, you just lost a friend. And in time of need, cannot be relied upon. And men have less scruple in offending one who is beloved than one who is feared. For love is preserved by the link of obligation, which owing to the baseness, this would be like the badness of men, is broken at every opportunity for their advantage. But fear preserved you by a dread of punishment which never fails. This is just like token Hobbes. Um, you could see how this would make its way into Hobbes. Nevertheless, a prince ought to inspire fear in such a way that if he does not win love, he avoids hatred because he can endure very well being feared whilst he is not hated, which will always be as long as he abstains or avoids, I don't know if there's a better word to say that, the property of his citizens and subjects and from their women. Um, so if we're going to sum up Machiavelli, remember he is not saying that all those good things are, are bad, but he is emphasizing one thing over goodness and that's being effective. He's saying that is so much better than being good. And remember, Machiavelli is concerned with how do you stay in power? How do you keep the crown on top of your head? So, and being effective, making sure that you're looking for things that are, you're doing things that are useful, safer. You don't see him saying this is necessarily better. He's just saying it's safer and useful to be this way. Kind of a heartless prince, but this is what he says helps you stay in power as a ruler of people. All right.